wanted to have the opportunity to uh, get this uh, lecture out, but had to reshoot it. So I want to apologize uh, to the members that did actually uh, watch this, and it was insanely long, etc. But that's okay. I prepared a more condensed uh, and precise outline for the specific content uh, because this content is quite different than what we've typically talked about before. Uh, so it's it's kind of uh, an interesting, you know, approach. Uh, okay, thank you for pointing out my SE Demon hat. I had no idea a um, Seahawks hat was uh, SE Demon, but uh, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, sure, Lorenzo, it's all good. But anywho, uh, greetings uh, from Seattle. I'm in my Airbnb from Seattle right now and brought my streaming gear and hopefully the internet connection actually holds up uh, to this end. That would be nice. Um, that'd be really nice. So yeah, but anywho, if you folks like wanna like make sure that you're getting season 18, uh, make sure you're signed up at csjoseph.live forward slash type grid or you've taken in your test and put it in like an actual valid email address because that means you're on our email list. And if you're on our email list, that means you will receive season 18 lectures uh, or whatever private lecture that we're doing for that particular season for that month. It'll just be emailed to you uh, to like a private link and whatnot, and you get to review it, which is pretty awesome if you think about it. Um, so, and uh, so yeah, um, yeah, you can, you can do whatever you want, logical perspective, just give credit to where it needs to be given. That's that's all there is to it. You can do whatever you want. Okay, so um, awesome. So let's let's actually like dive into this lecture here. Um, so um, this lecture is based on John Dr. John Beebe's book, Energies and Patterns of Psychological just that book yet. What are you doing with your life? If you actually care about Jungian analytical psychology, then you're gonna like want to actually uh, read that book. It's actually pretty short as well. Pretty nice. Um, I know that uh, Dr. John Beebe claims to be an INTJ and other people claim that he is an INTJ, but uh, given his approach, I think, um, uh, with uh, what he's saying, I kind of have to disagree, especially with like his writing style. It's very like, this happened to me, I said this. It's very first person. Uh, whereas, you know, INTJs, when they write, they're very second person what they write. But like, that's just one particular example among many. I've actually met him in person, really cool guy. But I liken him to be a lot closer to Carl Jung in, um, in just how he thinks about things. And in, it's my personal opinion that Dr. John Beebe is like the second coming of uh, Carl Jung. Uh, quite frankly, uh, that's kind of how I see him. So, but uh, within energies and patterns of psychological type, he talked about a concept known as mirror functions, right? Mirror functions. Well, I'll be honest. Yes, I renamed them to reflector functions. And the reason why is, is because we already talk about cognitive mirroring here within the CSJ community about how like, for example, an INFJ or an ESTP or Templar types, which are STP, NFJ types, they talk about uh, mirroring often, and uh, you know, and that's that's really important um, uh, from from that point of view. Mirroring is is uh, you know what uh, they do. Like they they'll take on the behaviors of other people when they're around them, and then when those other sources of behavior are gone, they'll stop behaving that way. Uh, essentially, and, and that's and that's kind of basically what that means. Uh, that 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 literally is what that means. That's where that comes from, etc. But that is not basically how I would describe mirror functions work. So this is the first episode of uh, four episodes that are going to be diving into mirror functions according to Dr. John Beebe, but we're going to be, you know, keeping to the CSJ nomenclature by doing so and by calling it reflector functions. So this is basically the first reflection or the first cognitive uh, reflection, and we're going to be analyzing the relationship between extroverted thinking and extroverted feeling for this particular episode, which means every single uh, one of the types um, are represented within, you know, this episode and the next three episodes after this episode to be able to gain this type of understanding. Uh, so just 
keeping you guys uh, aware of how that works. Um, yes, Romain, it is a reshoot because there's way too much chaos in the other. That's correct. Um, so, and besides, you know, you might have like an opportunity to ask some other questions. So, but yeah, uh, I mean, the members already had their opportunity to be on the show and watch the show and the crazy antics we had, but, uh, you know, doing a reshoot and it's going to be a little bit more condensed instead of like all over the place. Uh, Carl Gustav Jung is an INTP. Um, so, uh, no, I'm going to stick to this specific episode, folks. Try not to distract me too much because there's a lot of content to go over for this particular episode. So let's get down to it, okay? Um, so yeah, if you want to get a copy of Energies and Patterns of Psychological Type and you would like to support us, you can do that via our affiliate links at csjoseph.life forward slash reading. So please check that out. Also, uh, one thing about reflector functions that uh, most people don't even consider or that they are unaware of is that if you watch this episode in the next three episodes, you can get a general understanding of how reflector functions work and reflection relationships uh, between the cognitive functions. You'll start to see how, um, you know, basically attributes of the type grid end up coming out. Uh, you'll be able to basically see how certain cognitive functions directly uh, contribute to affiliative behavior or pragmatic behavior, etc., or systematic behavior versus interest-based behavior. And you'll be able to come to a better understanding of why certain aspects or attributes of behavior are attached uh, to the type grid if you're going through the type grid and, and checking that out. Uh, so, which is, which is pretty nice. It's nice to be able to uh, have that point of view and be able to understand uh, specifically uh, you know, how the, the type grid is structured in a general way just from the perspective of reflector functions. Now, granted, we've talked about cognitive axis, we've talked about cognitive synchronicity, cognitive asynchronicity, although I'm still talking about cognitive asynchronicity, we still have two episodes left of that uh, small season, and that season's over. And we've also heavily explored cognitive orbit within the context of season 18, which please check it out. Now, if you have missed some episodes of season 18 and because you weren't on our email list or something or you unsubscribed from our email list and then you ended up missing some episodes of season 18, you can actually watch every episode of season 18 as a member at csjoseph.life forward slash members. Just become a journeyman member and you'll be able to do that. Also, by the way, like for those of you that um, think that coaching is a little bit too high priced and whatnot, just like do like an ins our installment plan, which is just Acolyte, which is the next level above Journeyman, so that you can like just pay a fee per month. You end up accruing coaching credits over time, and then you can turn in those coaching credits, and there you go. Uh, so just throwing that out there in case you know someone was confused about that. So anyway. Knowing reflector functions really helps you better interpret some of the behavioral attributes that are, uh, you know, assigned to the type grid. And again, if you want to get a copy of the type grid, csjoseph.life forward slash type grid, just put in your email, boom, you get the type grid, and then you're going to be emailed one of these lectures every month. So, like, that's a thing. Um, so cool. Um, all right. Um, so, yeah, uh, it, it, it will be, uh, Emily J., it will be an interesting uh, lecture. So, um, awesome. Cool. Uh, so, let's keep going. All right. So, uh, the, the, the first cognitive reflection, extroverted thinking versus extroverted feeling. So, 11 minutes, 30 seconds in is kind of basically when the lecture starts. Um, but anyway, um, so what what is the point of reflector functions? What what are the reflector functions? What what's their purpose? And it's it's basically to draw out the cognitive attitudes and extend the various energies that are being exchanged amongst the cognitive attitudes with all the other functions. We heavily explored cognitive attitudes within season 16 playlist here on this YouTube channel. If you haven't watched that yet, it's one of the most important seasons to watch just to kind of get a, like a better understanding of how things work, etc. Uh, and so I really hope you guys watch that. And uh, it's it's it, it knowing knowing how the cognitive attitudes already are in their basic form, you can kind of see the reflector function of these these next four episodes as a, an expansion or an a 
appendix to uh, you know what we've already talked about in season 16. So this is kind of going to be going even deeper than we have before. Uh, but before I begin, I have to immediately go to a fantastic example uh, using um, Harry Potter, basically. Uh, and it's uh, specific to Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, which is book five or movie five uh, out there for those of you in there. And Harry Potter, uh, and yes, I will spoil it. Uh, and I don't care because like, if you haven't like watched the movie or read the book by now, that's on you and therefore not my problem. So get over yourself, just so you know. Uh, but uh, reality is, Harry Potter, the character, has to find something like a specific uh, prophecy that was created uh, by a professor at Hogwarts about him, etc. And this prophecy, what's contained within the prophecy, actually explains, in essence, how reflector functions work. And I found it very fantastic. And it goes down like this. It's talking about how, you know, neither Harry nor uh, Voldemort, or it says, quote, neither can live while the other survives, right? So you want to see uh, your reflector functions all having a particular relationship with one another. Kind of like how you have cognitive axis where your hero function is linked to your inferior function, your parent is linked to your child function, your nemesis is linked to your demon function, your critic function is linked to your trickster function, or you can look at cognitive orbit where you have the hero connected to the nemesis, you have the parent connected to the critic, the child uh, connected to the trickster, the inferior connected to the demon as well. Those are examples of cognitive orbit uh, and all of those are important uh, from uh, you know to that point from that standpoint. But um, reflector functions have a completely different set of relationships, and the set of relationship that they have is that the hero function is connected to the demon, the parent function is connected to the trickster, the child function is connected to the critic, and the inferior function is connected to the nemesis. This is basically a third set of connections or back doors or front doors, as you will, doors to different cognitive functions based on the position within your ego and your unconscious, right? And later in the lecture, we're going to be talking about how, you know, Carl Jung made the statement about, you know, how, you know, it's important that, you know, we go out of our way in life to make our unconscious conscious. And we're going to be explaining why that is, you know, as a result of this lecture and, and where that comes from and how that matters and why it manifests. It, it, th this is it. We're going to be discussing that uh, right here and now so uh, anyway um, so uh, with that being said um, here's another interpretation uh, and this comes from the Kentucky Fried Sage because uh, um, um, you know my mentor my INFJ mentor we always refer to him as the uh, Kentucky Fried Sage and he always would say you know Chase there's always a little bit of the demon in the hero there's always a little bit of the demon in the hero. And basically what he's talking about is Dr. John Beebe's mirror functions, but, you know, and we're renaming it to reflector functions to keep our nomenclature consistent and less confusing for people because, I mean, a lot of the psychological community use synonymous terms on a regular basis, so it kind of is what it is, you know, so, but I'm, I'm trying to make it less confusing for folks. Uh, but yes, uh, there's a little bit of the demon in the hero. Uh, so let's let's actually discuss that. Um, so the first reflection is extroverted thinking as linked to extroverted feeling, and it has a lot of different links to do that. So let's actually review uh, how that you know looks uh, visually. Um, so I have the uh, the trusty whiteboard from like you know forever ago. I hope you guys remember the uh, the, uh, the the target uh, the target whiteboard. Wow, it's like really horrible oh and by the way like i started like running out of ink with like the uh the dry erase marker today so yeah like the actual uh marker that came with it it finally just decided to die today um but yeah so yes uh the first reflection so um there's there's a lot of there's a lot of information here um now these basically demonstrates how these are linked you have the hero slash warrior which is like the um um, the immature versus the mature form of the hero uh, attitude. And then you have the teenager versus the parent, which is immature, mature. You have the child versus the divine or where your divinity is. 
Uh, and then you have the infant, also known as like the tyrant, right? Or the inferior, it's, it's a tyrant compared to like actual royalty. That's where the whole return of the king uh, meme or trope comes from. You have the nemesis versus the ally, which is the uh, immature, mature form. Then you have the senile old critic, old man versus the wise critic or old man. Then you have the trickster versus the master and naturally the demon as the angel. But if you look over here, you can see how all these functions are actually linked together. So for example, you have uh, extroverted thinking, uh, which is up here, which is uh, linked to extroverted feeling, or extroverted feeling is linked to extroverted thinking at the bottom. And then this, uh, and then the next link is, uh, you know, the parent is linked to the trickster, the child is linked to the critic, and the inferior is linked to the nemesis and the ally. And what this does is this creates something known as battlegrounds. And I, I cannot take credit for the battlegrounds because the battleground that um, our very own Chris Taylor within the uh, CSJ community uh, seem to have come up with. Holy smokes, I just realized like my headset might die. That, that sucks. That's okay, I have a spare battery for it. So we'll see how it goes. Let's see how long this lasts. Um, but, uh, but the point is, is that he, he discusses something known as the battleground functions and uh, and the battlegrounds basically are like so for example you have the hero connected to the demon and that's the battleground of titans for example because they're both they're both titans they have a lot of power and they have competition i mean think about it this you know the four sides of your mind is like a house right and each side of your mind is a room within the house it's like a four bedroom house basically and uh the demon is like well crap the the hero is is my roommate the ego this and the super ego is like crap the uh the ego is my roommate and you know i have to make peace with them and the hero can overpower me and put me in my box but you know i'm like a person too right so what about me and i gotta live with them so yeah i'll make peace while i can but then every now and then the hero is going to be like bogged down and overwhelmed and then that means i can come out of my room and start wreaking havoc etc it's the same kind of concept well, that's that's uh, that's one way that you know reflector functions actually come out because it can actually demonstrate or create a lot of negative or destructive behavior within a human being. And as much as it can also, you know, through you know maturing and growing, for example, uh, lead to a lot of um, you know mature behavior instead of immature behavior, a lot of constructive behavior basically as a result of uh, these uh, cognitive reflectors, right? And um, so it's important to keep track of that. It's important to know, like, you know, where you are, because if you if you know where you are on this, you can kind of see areas of development that you would need within your life. And and we discuss a little bit about this um, within the context of season 19. If you want to get access to season 19, all you have to do is just take the test, and then you'll be sent to like private lectures and and you know all of the public lectures, etc. Uh, all in one place and you can get all of them for an insanely reduced rate so you get like all 16 and this is where you go to csjoseph.life forward slash portal and you can see all in one place and uh, those episodes really help demonstrate you know a person's path towards uh, personal growth etc um, and you know that's important that's that's very important the difference is though is that uh, while that really focuses on cognitive gateways and being able to develop the individual four sides of your mind, you really want to also pay more attention to the granular approach of reflector functions because reflector functions will give you kind of more of an individual localized pathway for self-development. So you can be a little bit more focused about it and recognize some of the uh, you know other internal issues that may be happening. Because while it's great to you know eventually master all four sides of your mind and reach integration and enlightenment, the thing is is that that will not occur unless you get a better handle on your reflector functions you know as a result this is all you know very necessary etc uh so so yeah uh so yeah that's a thing um but uh okay uh yes hello everybody uh who are joining let's let's see some more likes you got 88 users but like not very many likes and i just might like get up and decide to go to the bathroom and if you want to prevent that from happening then uh you know just give me some more likes please that that would be nice uh so moving on so uh 
when you're talking about like so so let's look at let's look at like the let's go a little bit deeper on the individual uh reflectors like from an attitude point of view you know obviously you know te fe you have the first reflection but then you have the hero versus the warrior which can turn into the demonic hero or it can turn into the angelic hero which angelic hero is kind of more closer to the warrior and then you have the teen versus parent so you have the foolish teenager or the masterful teenager etc or you have the inner child which can be like the divine child and you can end up having a senile child or a wise child etc it's kind of like that young man that talks or the little kid that is super wise all of a sudden that no one like even thought that that child would like have so much, such wisdom this is exemplified within like king solomon it's also exemplified with the young man as described in the book of job as well uh, those are some examples of really, really young, uh, super wise children, etc. Uh, and then there's also like the infant versus uh, the royalty, which could be like the high chair tyrant or the allied king, etc. And then there's the nemesis ally approach, uh, which would be like the infantile nemesis versus the royal ally, basically. Or there's the senile slash wise critic which could be like the childish critic or the divine critic, etc., which is more of the version of the wise critic, uh, etc. Plus, then you have the trickster uh, versus the master. Uh, so, like the uh, so, like this would be like the teenage, the foolish teenager, or the responsible, uh, masterful, um, uh, you know, parent, etc., or the responsible. Uh, you the responsible master basically and then there's obviously the uh demon versus the angel which would have the heroic demon or the warrior demon and the warrior demon would be actually be you know more angelic essentially a warrior uh a warrior angel also like the the archangel essentially uh, was probably be more appropriate with the uh with the uh, nomenclature there. So all these ref levels of reflectors uh, within cognitive attitudes are absolutely necessary. And you have to kind of understand how these reflectors within your cognitive attitudes, within your eight attitudes, like attitudes like, um, you know, like these, et cetera, um, going in through these eight different attitudes, all extremely necessary to know so you can kind of help measure your own personal growth or where you are as a human being etc uh, so it's it's definitely a thing um, so yeah okay and um, so but yeah um, but anyway as you can see like you know the energies that each of these cognitive attitudes have between this hero versus warrior spectrum or this demon versus angel spectrum they're exchanging energy with one another they're exchanging energy with each other constantly they're exchanging energy through cognitive axis they're exchanging en uh, energy through cognitive orbit which is what we talked about earlier in the season they're exchanging energy through uh, externally through uh, cognitive synchronicity and cognitive asynchronicity so those two are external uh, these two are internal which is axis and orbit and a third internal exchange of energy is actually coming through uh, of these cognitive attitudes is coming through reflector functions so you know that's just kind of how it works that's how energy is exchanged between you and your cognitive functions etc you know to that end need more likes folks got I gotta have some more likes please um, so yeah and uh, uh, awesome Raka is here because uh, he first you know suggested that I actually look into this uh, and uh, by the way, like the fifth episode talking about reflector functions, uh, he's going to be coming on and doing a show with me where he's going to be explaining the battlegrounds a little bit more. So hopefully, uh, hopefully he can keep doing that uh, for us and he is able to give that presentation because I'm very much looking forward uh, to that and interviewing on that. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, thanks for the branding uh, uh, shout out there, bro, because like... <laughs> Uh, I didn't want to confuse people since we talk about mirroring with Templar types, so I had to like, I literally consulted my favorite dinosaur uh, doing this. Um, if you guys don't know, my favorite dinosaur is uh, Thesaurus, you know, hashtag dad joke, right? Right? I mean, I do have an infant right now, so like, hashtag dad joke. So, um, okay, if you have to ask why I need the likes, uh, please like Google that, uh, please please all right so so but anyway th the bottom line is is like there's multiple ways that cognitive functions can borrow each other's energy sometimes they spin on an axis or they or they they float on an orbit etc or sometimes they're just uniquely plugged together and they're just right there ready to go with that energy exchange etc um 
so so in general this is kind of like the direction uh you know of of development within the cognitive attitudes in relation to each other with the direction of how they're linked through reflection uh, so like, for example, uh, FE is a reflection of TE and vice versa. Uh, TI is a reflection of FI and vice versa. Uh, NI is a reflection of SI and vice versa. NE is a reflection of SE and vice versa. So these are all, these functions are also exchanging energy with one another. And this energy is passing through the barrier between what is conscious and unconscious. What is your ego versus what is your uh, uh, you know, your shadow, essentially. And uh, this really, really maximizing uh, this energy exchange, uh, even in some cases, even in a destructive way, but mostly preferably towards a constructive way, maximizing this energy exchange is what will really help you develop your functions and get them more, you know, away from the hero uh, approach to their cognitive attitude and closer to the warrior approach or the demon approach to their cognitive attitude, more closer to the uh, the angelic, or as we say, you know, uh, via cognitive transition or cognitive gateways, you know, the expedient route to the more meaningful route or the chaotic route versus the more orderly route. That's why we're talking about this, because it's that important for the sake of your personal growth. It's, it's absolutely critical. So, uh, so yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Dio, for explaining to people. Uh, awesome. Okay, so anyway... Uh, but let's let's actually provide some specific examples as to how these functions actually work and how this energy is being exchanged, right? So let's talk about the destructive reflections first. Uh, so the destructive reflections of extroverted thinking versus extroverted feeling, uh, where they're either both immature or they don't match their cognitive development, or one of them is mature versus uh, one of them immature, etc. But they are incomplete. They are not complete within their journey towards maturity, or their journey towards development, or their journey towards enlightenment, or their journey towards being more meaningful and less expedient, etc. However way you want to describe it, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's all the same anyway, symbolo symbologically speaking, you know, from an expert intuition standpoint. But yeah, let's 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 give an example of what expert thinking hero looks like compared to expert feeling demon, right? So, like for example, quote: If you follow my plan, then you're human. Um, wow, you guys don't follow the plan that I made, uh, so you obviously don't care. Then, so I will just treat you like a number. Uh, you're only human to me if you follow your plan. So this is something that we consistently see amongst extroverted thinking heroes on a regular basis. How often are ESTJs and ENTJs both accused of treating people like numbers, right? How, how often do we see that? We see it all the time. It's because, you know, Effie Demon just doesn't really give a damn about how other people feel. And uh, as a result of that, it's usually, and it's usually because they've been conditioned over time because they like to make all these amazing plans well they end up treating people like machinery as a result and it's because you know only a machine could actually follow their plan or their procedure that their extroverted thinking utilized because te hero is very systematic so this is an example of uh, a reflector function group which is te hero to fe demon you already know that uh you know this grouping is systematic so this is an example of how cognitive functions show on the type grid how something is systematic right uh just like how fe hero to te demon guess what all fe heroes are affiliative that's an example of how something can be affiliative or should be affiliative or why it's affiliative on the type grid right literally right here we can see this right now okay so, uh, so yeah, like, you know, TE Hero is all about, you know, making these plans. And the thing is, the problem is, is that the more mature, immature the TE Hero is, the more immature the TE Hero is, then, well, guess what? Uh, their plans aren't actually going to account or have the accountability for human beings. They're really just going to end up treating people like numbers or machines or like cattle, which is really frustrating. And this is oftentimes why, uh, you know, immature or young or underdeveloped TE heroes end up getting a bad rap or bad reputation or bad status with other people because they just come off so uncaring. And it's because they're putting all of their desire and all of their faith into the system or their plan where they're putting their plan above humans 
which is not really an effective way to go. And it's so interesting because you can see this all the time with people like Jeff Bezos or Tim Cook because they're both TE heroes, for example. It's extremely common with them and with how they approach it. Uh, you, you gotta you gotta watch out um, because they're 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 putting um, you know function over form. They're putting uh, the system above the people, and and that can be a problem, right? So, and then we have, you know, the Effie hero versus T.E. Demon, which is just as effed up, let's be honest. Uh, so, quote, uh, only my opinion here matters. Uh, the only opinion uh, in the room amongst all these people here, the only opinion that matters is mine because I care the most. Because I go out of my way to care about everybody else. Therefore, you have to listen to me. You have to listen to my opinion. My opinion matters the most. You only have status because I helped you build that status, right? And this is kind of where you can see that Effie Hero entitlement and that TE Demon all of a sudden just doesn't give a damn about anyone else's status, anyone else's reputation. Anytime, and this is why they're TI inferior with their, if they feel like they're not being listened to, even though they expect everybody else to listen to them, and even though they will not listen to anyone else, is because of their TE Demon not caring about anyone else's opinion or anyone else's status or anyone else's reputation except for their own because they see themselves as entitled to it because they're the one who goes out of their way to help everybody else. Thank you, Effie Heroes, for being so entitled. Thank you, thank you for that. Great. Yeah, and you, 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 elect your guy, you, you folks don't even ask for help, which is also really frustrating because you not asking for help continually puts you in the position of helper. But then when you help people, you destroy everyone else's voice and put your own voice on a pedestal for everyone else to see. And then you expect everyone to listen to it because you're the most caring person who is present. Wow. This is why you. This is why you know people in California. Those women uh, in California. Those ENFJ, ESFJ women in California who constantly talk about asserting their grandparent rights. Wow. Uh, and and will take their own children uh, to court over how those how their children are raising their grandchildren. And they will destroy the reputation of these new parents, these children of theirs, in in favor of you know asserting their TE demon grandparent rights. Wow, that's effective. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's so annoying. I hate it. I, I, I literally hate it. Stop doing it. Just stop. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then, and then of course, you know, we have, uh, you know, TE teenager, like TE parent, you know, versus expert feeling trickster. Okay. This, this is the next level down. So this, we've, we've just, we've just gotten done with the hero and demon, uh, destructive reflections. Let's go down to the, uh, the, you know, the parent versus, um, trickster reflections here we go here, here it is quote anything goes or anything could be normal okay so let's talk about that so in intj they have effie trickster and because they're effie trickster they are accepting of literally anything anything can be acceptable right well it's kind of the same with an istj right? the istj is affiliative so for them it's more like well anything can be normal or anything can be normalized we could just create this random tradition and it's normalized you know uh and the bottom line is that effie tricksters they accept anything and everything but they shouldn't anything is acceptable so te rules are created that end up lacking principles and don't even follow social norms they don't even have to follow social norms and then they make other people in their lives that are closest to them live by those rules even though those rules have absolutely no social backing whatsoever because anything goes or anything can be normal it's like wow Wow, that's like super destructive. Like, really? Come on. Come on, TE parents. Really? What the hell are you doing? How do you think you're going to be dignified or have like an actual status or reputation among people when you constantly have this anything goes or anything can be normal attitude? And then you enforce that attitude on other people. Because you know what happens when you do that to other people? You are making them and keeping them ignorant. Because of your ignorance of social norms, you are creating rules and standards based on that ignorance that cause other people around you to be stupid. Cause other people around you to become ignorant or make them more ignorant. This is what happens with a destructive reflection of extroverted thinking parent versus extroverted feeling trickster. What the hell?
What are you doing? It's when your parent is being a teenager, not a parent. Unbelievable. Literally unbelievable. You're literally like a teenage mom, you know, who like is loose with her uh, ethics and her social norms and breaking social norms by getting pregnant. You know what I'm saying? teen mom and then all of a sudden like pretending that you have these rules over your child even though you broke the social norm of getting a teenage pregnancy to begin with thank you very much te parents for this thank you thank you thank you very much for contributing that to society that's fantastic or we can look at the extroverted feeling teenager aka parent right and they're te trickster quote i'm just going to listen to everyone without any filter which makes every parent create and enforce social norms that are worthless and irresponsible and then i'm going to force everyone in my life to live by those social norms yay wow even though like you're literally listening to anyone it's just like how my ex-girlfriend is like hey wear this crystal it has superpowers and i'm like wow who did you listen to to tell you that for you to come to that conclusion have you even bothered to verify that no you're just going to adopt other people's beliefs and then force other people around you to live by those beliefs that you randomly adopted even though you never actually verified them thank you very much effie parent and te trickster thank you thank you thank you for destroying my life for subjecting me to you know uh church dogma without verifying it yourself thank you for uh you know uh, subjecting me to the cult of the family the cult of the church the cult of the community you want to know which of the cognitive functions are the most cultish those are effie parents folks effie parents effie parents consistently consistently this is a serious problem okay like literally that's that's where it's from it's so interesting because ENPs are often accused of creating cults etc and uh, and having those maniacal evil cults but the reality of the situation is folks it's actually the effy parents they're the they're just not so easy to spot you know what I'm saying you can kind of see Jesus doing it with the disciples so te child versus extroverted feeling critic you need to think about this because I deserve it and I am helpful. And because I've been helpful to you, you know, uh, you need to think about these things. You know, you need to listen to me and my opinion. Because I helped you, that automatically means my opinion is valuable. Yay! You know, you need to think about these rules, you know, because uh, this is what I value. And they're like, well, wait a minute. What about what other people value? Hold on. Okay, thank you, TE child. Thank you. You know, why, why are you making the claim that you deserve something and because you, you deserve all that because you have credit, you know, you're, you're giving yourself credit. You give yourself credit because you're helpful. And so that means so that means your credibility is based on your level of helpfulness, the amount of effort you put into helping other people. And that's where you credit. So so you're admitting that you're actually transactional. You're admitting that you only help people so that you can be more credible, so that you have enough street cred to have a voice to use whenever you want. So you can grandstand whenever you want to child. Wow. Thank you. That's effective. That, that that's amazing. Like, come on. Really? Really? Or then there's Effie Child versus T Critic. This is me. This is me. Where it's like, hey, I care about these people so much that I'm willing to publicly shame them. Or or <laughs> I'm I'm going to expose others for their stupid, right? So they stop being stupid and stop harming other people. And I'm just gonna use that as my justification to expose other people and publicly shame them whenever I want to and absolutely destroy their status and their reputation whenever I want to without any consequence whatsoever, right? You know, uh <laughs> You know, it's like, hey, you know, because my happy child, you know, wants to protect people from harm. And because I'm protecting for people uh, from harm, I, I, I have full on justification to harm other people. Like, wow. Great. Just great. You know, like, 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 seriously. Yay, it's back. About damn time. All right. It's not about the effie parent. That's where I was off. Okay. So I left off at the FE parent. Okay. So, oh, T critic and FE child. Okay, yeah. Okay, so just to 
kind of refresh right where we left off. This is for me, Effie Child versus T Critic. It's where like I give myself justification to publicly shame other people because I'm trying to prevent harm to other people because Effie Child cares about other people. The thing is is that it doesn't realize or is aware that it's kind of foolish because it's like, oh, I'm going to stop these people from being harmed by harming these other people. Wait a minute. Isn't that like crazy how that works? And that's Effie Child. Effie Child will just basically, all it does is shift harm. It shifts blame even. It's just the blame shifter. That's all it does. It just shifts blame. It shifts harm. It shifts public shame. It shifts fear. It shifts all these negative things. That's what happens when this cognitive reflection between Effie Child and TE Critic are being destructive. It just gives itself the excuse to publicly shame anyone and expose other people for their stupid so that they stop being stupid and stop harming other people but then that in of its own right could be considered harmful you see what i'm saying and then of course you know you go next to the uh you know the inferior versus nemesis functions which is also just pretty freaking crazy okay so um so then, like, you know, extroverted thinking inferior versus extroverted feeling nemesis. It's like, quote, I have to take away your voice and make you look bad because your values don't match my values, right? And they're holding on to status kind of like sand, you know, uh, because it's extroverted thinking inferior. And they're holding real tightly to that sand, which is causing the sand to slip through their fingers, etc. And they're worried about other people being selfish. And they're also asking themselves, you know, will people contribute to me? You know, other people might be selfish and they may not give to me. They not contribute to me and then because of that they don't even they don't they decide to not go out this is one of the reasons why te inferiors are behind the scenes types their background types with their interaction style informative responding control or informative responding outcome etc this is why it's because expert thinking inferior is with their fe nemesis and they're literally worried about other people caring about them and uh, and then because of that, it's like, oh, I don't want to lose this precious status that I've already gained. But the thing is, is that they're not aware of the fact that their status is decaying. So they actually have to show up to keep their status. But they don't understand that. So then they just decide to withdraw and not be present whatsoever because they're worried about whether or not people will value their opinion or will even help them or contribute to them. Basically, it's like it's 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 really toxic. Here's another destructive uh, approach. Extroverted feeling inferior versus extroverted thinking nemesis. I care enough that you shouldn't be thinking that about me. Gosh, you're stupid. Why do I bother helping you? We don't even take the time to listen to me. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Did you inform? Did you inform the other person that uh, you're only going to help them because they listen to you? Is that not transactional? Can you not see how transactional that is? Really? It's especially bad for ISTPs because they're interest-based. You see what I'm saying? So, folks, this is an ex these are all examples, solid examples, as to why, uh, you know, extroverted thinking uh, or, or an extroverted feeling within these reflective functions can be extremely destructive, right? Destructive all the way through. So that's, that's a problem, right? And it's really, really annoying. So... Um, and uh, yes, Web Kelpie, uh, it can shift focus from ourselves. Yes, it can. It, it is like the every child is the ultimate blame thrower. It really, absolutely is. Um, so then, um, so then let's let's look at the constructive reflections of extroverted thinking versus extroverted feeling. So let's go back to the hero and the demon, or the warrior and the angel, essentially or the archangel. So here's the constructive reflections. Um, and if they, and this, this is as if they're both mature or they have similar cognitive development on the mature side. And what to be constructive with your cognitive, uh, you know, with your reflector functions via cognitive reflection, in order to be constructive, you have to instead lead, lead with your unconscious reflector functions instead of your ego functions, making your unconscious 
conscious, right? Carl Jung has said this multiple times, and this is literally how you do it. This is how you make your unconscious conscious. It's when you make the conscious decision to lead with your reflector functions in your unconscious first before your ego. This is this is what people colloquially refer to as ego death, even though those people who talk about ego death don't actually know what the hell they're talking about. And I wish they would stop talking about that because this is the most annoying thing in the world and just absolutely triggers me every time I hear them talk about ego death. What they're actually saying is what Carl Jung is trying to teach everybody. Make your unconscious conscious. And this is literally how you do it, folks. This is the answer. And if you do this and you practice this, you will help yourself develop uh, your, uh, your ego, develop the four sides of your mind, and develop your personal development towards maturity instead of immaturity, towards the meaningful instead of what is expedient. For example, hashtag Jordan Peterson. That's, this is literally how you do it. So let me give you some specific examples. Extroverted thinking warrior versus extroverted feeling angelic or the angelic warrior, the archangel warrior. Quote, these people have a very human approach. I can make a more human plan where the plan itself is made for humans instead of a machine. The plan is far more refined. It is because it is because these, you know, TE heroes are all of a sudden that aware, they are aware, they care, their FI inferior cares all of a sudden that a human is following their plan, that a human is following their procedure. Not a monkey, not a machine, not cattle, right is where they start treating people like human beings because they treat themselves like a human being so maybe they should treat other people like human beings and stop treating people like numbers or cattle etc it's because whatever plans and processes that they make to keep track of all the tasks keep track of the schedule keep track of time keep track of widgets etc always has like a you know a percentage of it it's very human centric it's all focused on the human approach and the humans who will be conducting that procedure or conducting that plan right or conducting that process that expert thinking procedure it's very human focused it's not numbers focused it's human focused they're not so focused on how much profit they're going to extract from these humans for example really bad example uh, came from a company in Seattle I'm in Seattle right now so it's kind of very it's very pertinent where this where a literal where the where the chief of operations or the chief of, of finance literally said quote okay we're going to extract as much uh, work and time and effort as we can from all of our employees as much as we can as much as possible they're all on salary we're gonna work them uh, you know up to 60 hours a week and then we're just going to f hire managers to oversee them to keep them as productive as possible we're gonna extract as much productivity as we possibly can this is the wrong attitude and that is an example of this this reflector combination of expert thinking hero and fe demon gone bad when it needs to be expert thinking warrior and expert feeling angelic because instead these people would realize that their workforce would be far more productive if their plans included room or space to allow these people to be human beings instead of cattle or numbers or monkeys or machines it's not that hard. You ever hear about the, the, the saying, it's so easy a monkey could do it? This is where that comes from. This cognitive reflection, these reflector functions, is exactly where that saying comes from. That's why it exists, okay? All right, let's do the next one. Let's do the next uh, version. Extroverted feeling warrior uh, and TE angelic. So this is FE hero versus uh, uh, TE uh, demon in the healthy constructive approach, right? An angelic warrior. Other people's opinions actually matter because the TE demon cares about asking someone's opinion to raise the standard of extra feeling care quote i could be more efficient or have a higher standard of care if i just ask other people their opinion before i execute said care because that makes my care more efficient huh wait a minute so the fe hero is admitting to themselves via humility that they could be have a higher quality of care delivered to people that they're caring about. What if this person is a nurse? What if this Effie hero is a nurse? Because they're first asking other people's opinions about how 
they could be more efficient about caring for other people instead of just assuming with their TI inferior that they're already the best at caring and only their opinion of how to deliver said care matters the most. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, great. Okay, fair enough. So, um, not asking other people's opinions before caring reduces the quality of care, folks. Asking other people their opinion about how you would care before you do it is not the same as asking for help. This is one of the reasons why FE heroes don't ask for help ever, because they always they, it makes them feel worthless because of their FI nemesis. The thing is, is that asking somebody their opinion is not the same as asking for help. You're just literally having them share their opinion with you so you can be more efficient at helping which is what you should be doing, which is the mature variant of this cognitive reflection. So make sure you do that, okay? So seriously, like, make sure you do that, all right? And then let's get down to the parent function. This is extroverted thinking parent versus extroverted feeling master, right? This is the masterful parent. Finding out what other people value allows the extroverted thinking parent to be more responsible with the rules. For example, from Naruto, right? Uh, Naruto's master, Kakashi. Right, And uh, it's nice to have rules, but guess what? All rules are subjective. And allowing certain rules to be broken for the sake of other people is what this cognitive reflection in its constructive form is all about. So Kakashi had a lesson for his students, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, and he explained to them that those who disobey the rules are trash. They are scum. But those who abandon their friends or leave their friends behind are worse than scum. You see? There is a moral or an ethic, an ethic that is behind the TE parent rules. And the ethic is consider that people come first before your little rules. Your little rules may not actually matter before people matter, TE parent. So, for example, social norms obviously just don't matter that much, but have their basic social normal, which basically means do no harm. If you're an extroverted thinking parent and your rules are actually harming somebody, you're doing it wrong. You're being immature. You need to mature up, right, and recognize through cognitive reflection that maybe you should be focusing on do no harm with whatever rules or standards you actually create. This is why the Hippocratic Oath exists. It comes from extroverted thinking parent. The Hippocratic Oath is the best concrete example of how constructive this cognitive reflection actually can be between TE parent and extroverted uh and extroverted feeling, um, you know, trickster or when in its masterful form, okay? Remember, those who break the rules are scum, but those who abandon their friends or leave their friends behind are worse than scum. Never forget the lesson of Kakashi because that's where this comes from, all right? And then there's the Effie parent version versus TE uh, trickster, aka master, when it's being the masterful parent. Imagine TE trickster actually filtering out things so its ethical and social norms are accurate and valid, figuring out the right people to listen to instead of just listening to just about anyone, which opinions are the most valuable. Appearances are deceiving to TE tricksters because of the fake social proof like credentials and training and credibility, which is all fake and subjective, and they assume without verifying that those opinions are more valid. You know, oh, he's got a doctor and he has these credentials, so his opinion is more valid, so I could feel safer about taking the COVID-19 vaccine. Right. Okay. Sure. Did you actually, like, spend time to verify? Like, how do you know that? Like, how do you know? How do you know that you can trust that person? How do you know? Because they have social proof. So you're making your little TI child decisions based on other people's social proof that you could see with your Effie parent? How is that healthy? How is that constructive? Maybe you should spend more time verifying instead of relying on social proof for your decision-making, Effie parents, you ISFJs and you INFJs out there. Because guess what? When you rely on social proof for your decision-makings, it makes you ignorant. Stop being ignorant. Stop relying on social proof. And instead, learn how to filter. Not everyone's voice matters. Not everyone's opinion matters. Why? Tell me, why do you think the heroin addict laying down on the side of the street and his opinion matters? Why do you think his opinion matters? It does not, Effie Parent. It doesn't. 
Stop giving him the time of day. Because when you do, you're enabling him. Stop enabling him. And because you're enabling him, you're enabling society. And you're enabling all those people who have social proof and who have credentials to actually have power. Stop doing that. It doesn't help anybody. Seriously. Stop doing it. And then expert thinking divine versus expert feeling wise. So this is uh, T.E. Child versus F.E. F. E., uh, F. E. Critic, also known as wise divinity. Paying attention to what other people value ahead of time instead of sharing uh, their your own beliefs. So seriously, like ENFPs and ESFPs, like no one cares about what you believe. No one cares. No one cares about your opinion. Find out if people actually care about the subject matter that your opinion relates to before actually sharing it. Exercise some patience for once. If you exercise some patience, you might be more constructive with this cognitive reflection. You might be closer to maturity and actually being meaningful because then you would actually know that your TE child's opinion would actually be meaningful to be shared with at that moment in time because you actually spent the time to find out if the other person actually values it or not ahead of time. You might want to do that. Like seriously, you might actually be successful in your life. People might actually respect you. People might actually want to be around you or will be willing to stick around for you. People will actually be love to hear your opinion or actually find it valuable because you're very you're trying to check what they value first before you share your values. It's not that hard. Like be mature, grow up. Grow up, TE child, grow up. And then for me, Oh yes, extroverted feeling child versus extroverted thinking critic, also known as extroverted feeling divine versus extroverted thinking wise or the wise divinity. Guess what? I can be really harsh with every child and harm other people for their own good, like I said earlier. Sometimes I take on too much harm for the good of others or the good of the system. You know, extroverted thinking critic is it's the good of the system. And I see those rules over there and I'm filtering out the lies so I can give people a better life. So the problem is, is that, like I said earlier, is that, you know, I'm shifting blame or I'm shifting harm from one group to another. The difference is, is that every child needs to learn to take all of the harm onto itself and learn how to become the pariah with its behavior and thus lead by example. Leading by example is the key. That way you're not shifting blame anymore. That way you're not shifting harm anymore. By leading by example, people will stop harming themselves and they'll start thinking about things differently because you're able to protect them by shifting it towards yourself. Now, granted, you have to have self-respect and self-esteem and not obviously, uh, you know, sacrifice yourself for other people consistently. But the difference is, is that by leading by example with your own life, you can slay every freaking sacred cow that these people have within their life and affect massive change. You ESTPs and you ENTPs out there, stop being pussies and stop being afraid to lead by example. I don't care if you just freshly read a book. If you don't have the life experience uh, to back up what you read in that book, then you're, what you think is absolutely meaningless and you're not going to help anybody. It doesn't matter if you offer them advice, Effie Child. You actually don't know what you're talking about because you don't have the experience to back it up. So stop doing it. It doesn't make sense. Seriously, stop. You have to show people their sacred cows are as a result of their conditioning. And the only way to break their conditioning is if you break your conditioning first. Okay? That's how it is. Established social norms may not be healthy. And guess what? Every child knows this. And I slay these established social norms on a regular basis and take on the social fallout for your benefit and become the pariah for the sake of others. I break the rules or the chains that are on other people so others can be free and I can hopefully finally be myself and actually be accepted, socially accepted as myself. But if I'm just shifting harm from one group to another, no one learns their lesson, right? Because it's like the blind leading the blind or, or, or better yet, an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. And there is no one more eye for an eye than TI parent. Trust me. Watch out for that. Where, where's the wisdom in that, folks? There is no wisdom in that. So Effie Childs, like you need to like seriously pay attention to this. Very important. So... Another example is how I often answer questions even though I don't get paid. Like, so for example, 
um, I am often accused personally of like people on Reddit or wherever else that, you know, I'm only in it for the money. I only care about money or whatever. Like no one knows the amount of hours and time that I put in pro bono for so many people within this community that I, I don't even charge. They'll ask me questions and then I just have to like ignore people after a while because it can get pretty crazy. But there are people out there who have some serious needs. Like I, I've had some emergency calls sometimes. I've helped people talk people out of suicide on a consistent basis because it was emergent like i have put in the volunteer work i have done the pro bono uh, aspect and guess what i consistently do it it's just that you know people often can take advantage of that and then sometimes every child uses that taking advantage of victim mindset to shift blame and to shift harm from one group of people to another instead of actually living by example which is something both ESTPs and ENTPs need to actually learn because that is the wise approach. No one else is going to be freed unless those people can see Effie Child leading and living their life by example so that those people can be free too. Because those people will not take the shackles off of their bullshit uh, established social norms or their bullshit rules and regulations and standards that they have, their really poor standards, until they see the TI parent, aka the Effie child, leading in a completely diff different direction with their own life, with their own point of view. That's where it comes from, okay? Seriously. And then, uh, and then the inferior functions. Extroverted thinking inferior versus uh, extroverted feeling nemesis, extroverted, which is also extroverted thinking uh, royalty versus extroverted feeling uh, ally, basically the masterful royalty. Um, and basically, this is when just TE inferior just decides, you know what, I'm just going to show up. I don't care if someone doesn't care about me or if they're going to contribute to me. I respect other people's values. And just because they don't match my values, it will not cause me to remain silent. And I still will share my conflicting opinion and my conflicting values. People get rewarded in public for what they have practiced for years in private. And you know what? I practice my opinion. I've read all these books. I, I've developed my own value system. And I'm not ashamed to share it. I don't care if other people don't value it or if people are not going to contribute to me because I can contribute to myself. I'm strong enough to contribute to myself and I'm strong enough to share my conflicting opinion regardless of the social or status or reputational fallout. Folks, if extroverted thinking inferiors would realize this, they'd realize that they would gain far more respect and far more status by sharing their conflicting opinions because it sets them apart. When they don't say anything, they just look like everyone else. And then they don't have status, and their status decays over time. No shit. Maybe they should, like, fix that. And then the final one. Extroverted feeling inferior versus extroverted thinking ally for you ISTPs and INTPs out there, which is masterful royalty as well. When the student is ready, the master will appear. Okay? Verify what others know ahead of time before attempting to improve and teach them how to do something or attempting to help them. Verify whether or not they actually need your help first before actually giving them help. Do you know how arrogant you come off when you just show up and you just start helping them even though they didn't ask it or they actually know how to solve the problem themselves but they're not doing it fast enough or they're not doing it the right way that you think it needs to be done? Do you know how arrogant you come off that way? Do you think you're going to be wanted? Do you think people are going to stick around for you? They're not. They're going to abandon you and they're not going to invite you to things, SE parent and NE parent. Pay attention. Verify. Find out what people know first before actually offering your help. It's that simple. Do it. And guess what? Your reflector functions will mature. Okay? Remember, folks, reflector functions enable each other. The immature enables the mature, but the mature does not enable. The mature provides accountability. Lead with your unconscious functions, with your reflector functions first, to develop your own personal maturity. Like Carl Jung said, in order for you to have a good life, in order for you to be the most advanced version of yourself, you have to make the unconscious conscious. It's very important because it will literally lead and direct the entire path of your life until you do this. Okay? <sighs> It would be like, you know, like, 
if you're doing this, if you're doing what is meaningful, not expedient, it's like TE Trickster, like filtering out things, or like my daughter who has, you know, TE Child. If she's not enabling her TE Child in her opinion, but she's trying to find out if other people would value her opinion before she shares it, that would be amazing. That would be absolutely incredible. Also, uh, shout out to Chris Taylor for turning me on to this side of uh, Dr. John Beebe's uh, book, Energies and Patterns of Psychological Type. If you'd like to pick up a coffee and uh, support this channel, please go to csjoseph.life forward slash reading and click on our affiliate link. That would be fantastic. Also, uh, shout out to Eric Bauer, um, who discussed the recent DNA-related uh, discussion uh, with the cognitive functions. I find that fascinating, and I think I'd like you as a guest on the show to actually discuss that in front of the audience. I think that would be that would be great uh, to do that. Um, so if you could uh, contact us uh, at support at csjoseph.life to set that up, that would be great. Um, so anyway, folks, this is the first uh, reflection. These are the reflector functions of extroverted thinking versus extroverted feeling. And this is uh, the end of season 18, episode 14. Um, now, I will be happy to do a quick 10 minute Q&A session relating to uh, the content of this particular episode, if you would like. So go ahead and ask me, um, ask me these uh, questions. So, okay. Uh, uh, I, INFP, study humanities at a mainly leftist university, and it's really hard to say my opinion, but I found people that respect me even though they don't agree with me in a lot of things. That's right, Estevan, keep doing that. Keep doing that. It will help you reach maturity faster and thus happiness in, in life. Um, so, yeah. How do you ping uh, people? I don't know what that means. Yeah, folks, like this is some of the stuff that we talk about in season 18. If you want to get it like emailed to you, csjoseph.life forward slash type grid, sign up for the type grid, uh, put in your email, resubscribe to our email list if you are not on it anymore, or take our test, give us your email, and you could receive season 18 episodes like this for free in your mailbox every month. This just happens to be a reshoot, and that's why it's out right now uh, in this format. But the next episode is not going to be public like this, so you might want to like pay attention uh, to that. Um, why do ISFPs choose to be val bachelors? Because ISFPs are worried about whether or not other people will value them. Uh, okay, can TE master be achieved uh, through great effort and trial and error? Uh, TE master can be achieved through verification, just asking questions instead of assuming that you already know what the truth is. Okay, um, fast track ways to developing SE trickster. Uh, try to actually perform and learn and practice you have to you have to practice like focus on practicing as much as you can ashley otto asks how can an infj transcend their mercurial states of being and be more present in the now again through practice expert sensing is all about practice how to develop te trickster as an infj ask questions instead of making statements kitty blossom can you say guess who's back waifu can you say a way to verify if it's possible to do an energy exchange between reflection functions instead of using an extroverted one in the middle of the way i don't know what you're asking and i don't think that's accurate shy ggs how can we learn the art of language to share this with others without burning them to the ground not when you're on a rant, but in person, you have the ability to do this and want that ability. Shy Gigi, look into the Socratic method. That would help. Um, uh, okay. Um, what should TE Trickster look for when they do filter uh, people's opinion, advice, and thoughts? Instead of looking for social proof, look for other people who have actual experiences, who have actually done and followed that person's advice or that person's opinion. Look for the fruit, look for the results, look for the freaking outcome. That might help. How can INFPs overcome their selfishness? By being more helpful and offering help to other people. Okay. Uh, what do you think of the, that's not relevant, so yeah, um, okay, well, it looks like that's it for questions, folks, uh, seems that the, uh, relevant questions have stopped, so thank you all for watching, uh, it's been awesome, and, uh, I think I'll see you guys, uh, tonight, so, uh, I'll see you then, oh, hold on, Stellar Memer, uh, so if I hypothetically, uh, read books like the Rational Mail from the reading list, I shouldn't be telling people how valuable they are until I apply the concepts, yes, 
yes, apply things that you read first before offering advice. Uh, is reflector functions other other back doors uh, to the ego? Technically, yes. Color of the sky, yes. All right, folks, that's it. I'm out. Uh, it's good to see you all again and glad to be back. And I'll see you guys next time. So later.